everyone. I run into this a lot where I get these um, these uh, DSL modems or sometimes these uh, cable modems that, um, well they're actually, they're modems but they're also switches too. So you see the green is where the DSL phone line goes in but then the other yellow s spots are the uh, switch ports. Well what happens a lot of times is that after the, the contract is over, the, the people are no longer using the service is a lot of times the phone company doesn't want these things back so they're just junk. However, you can turn them into a plain old switch if you know how to go in and just shut off the things that make it a router um, so that it won't uh, adversely affect your network. In other words, if you just take and put this on your network without making any adjustments to it, it's probably set up to be a DHCP server and a RIP router which is going to wreak havoc on your network. However, if you go in and shut those things off, then you would just have a plain old four port switch which could be kind of handy. So I'm going to dive into the um, the graphical user interface here in a minute and we'll take a look at what we need to do to shut off the things to turn that into a, uh, a plain old dumb switch. So in order to get started what I did is I connected an Ethernet cable to one of the uh, switch ports and I also connected it to my laptop. Um, when I went to the command prompt <clears throat> I know you can't really read that because the camera doesn't focus well enough on that, but it's giving me a 169 address uh, for my wired Ethernet, which means the DHCP is turned off. That makes me think that this might have been set up as a bridged uh, modem. So what I'm going to do is, if you look, on a lot of these devices, they've usually got a spot marked reset. I'm going to go ahead and hold in the reset button, and uh, I think I'm probably going to power cycle it too. Every model is going to be different as to how you reset back to default factory settings. But I want to get back to default settings so I can at least get DHCP and then what I'm going to do is uh, try to use the default credentials to get in there so that I can start managing um, managing the, uh, the graphical interface. Okay, be back a little okay, bit. Okay, so after I was able to factory default that um, modem slash switch uh, it did give me a 192 address. Um, I can see I've got right here, we've got 192.168.0.133. See my gateway is 0 0.1, so that tells me that's probably the address of the router. So since that's the only thing I'm, ping I'm uh, connected to right now, if I try to ping it and it responds, which it is, that tells me that's my, that's my router. So what I'm going to do is open up a browser. Remember, this is this is specific. I'm doing this specifically for a, you know, old CenturyLink DSL uh, router slash switch. It could be different depending on what piece of equipment you're working on. The goal is a get it factory defaulted so you could talk to it, and b get access to the interface so that you can um, go in and shut off the routing and the, uh, the most importantly the DHCP because you don't want two DHCP servers on your uh, on your network. Uh, 192.168.0.1. Okay, uh, a lot of times the password, you can either look this up on the internet or sometimes the default password's on the bottom of the uh, of the unit. Like on mine, it's written down on the bottom. So it's, uh, I'm just, I just flip it over and I can see what the, Password is actually that's it. Oh, that's from when I was in it before. Okay, so all right, so this is my switch slash modem. I'm gonna go into advanced. Actually, let me go to wireless first. Now this depends on what you want to do. You could, if it comes with wireless, use it as an access point. Uh, I don't want to, so I'm going to make sure I shut off wireless and apply that. And um, let's see, it's asking me to wait, so I think the, it's reloading here. Now I'm going to go over to Advanced Setup, and so this is my, so over here on the left, I'm looking for DHCP server, DHCP settings. I need to disable that. This is really important, folks. This is the main point I'm trying to drive home. If you put this device on your network with DHCP enabled, it will mess up your network. You do not want that. So it's important that we find the DHCP server and shut it off. Okay, so shut that off. Let's check WAN settings, see if there's anything there. Oh wait, I'll go back here, set that 
DHCP to, to disable, I forgot to click apply. Disable, apply. Yeah, very important to apply and, and save. And I'll take a look at the wider network settings. There's probably nothing there, but let's just take a look anyway. Uh, WAN settings. Protocol not running. Okay, perfect. So there's there's no there's no uh, ISP protocol running. So I think this is good, just like that. I shut off the wireless, and I shut off the uh, the DHCP. So at this point now, this is just a plain old switch. Although I I could I guess if I wanted to. I could manually assign an IP address to this so that if I wanted to come back and manage it, because remember I shut off DHCP, so once I reboot this, it's not going to be handing me an address anymore, which would make it a little tougher to talk to. I could either default it again, or um, there's some other tricks you can do to figure out what IP address it is. But I'm just going to go with that. So right now what I've done is I've converted that DSL modem slash four port switch into just a plain old dumb four port ethernet switch which i can use to expand my network okay so thanks for watching